Um, hello, everybody. I'm Matthias Donner, and um, I'm from the University of California, Santa Barbara. And I'm going to be presenting on noise resistant DMD, which is a noise resistant algorithm for dynamic load decomposition. Um, this work represents um, the research done at the Mesich Research Group. Um, with that, I'll begin. Um, sorry. I don't know what's happened. Um, so, as a quick review, um, if we have a discrete time dynamical system, x prime is equal to t of x, we can define the Koopman operator on that system. And so the Koopman operator u maps observables to their future value under the dynamics of the system. So the Koopman operator is also called a composition operator. Um, apparently there's some issues with my voice. Is it better? Okay. Um, so the Koopman operator is a composition operator. It's just composing a function with the map T. And one of the largest benefits of this is that the Koopman operator is a linear operator, as um, Michael um, said in the last presentation. Um, so with a linear operator, we can use linear systems theory to study the system. But the main issue with the Koopman operator is it is an infinite dimensional operator. And um, in order to study it, we need to find a restriction of the operator that can be represented in a finite arithmetic. So to do this, we need to find an invariant subspace of the operator. So if we have a set of observables F1 up to Fk, um, which span an invariant subspace, we can find, we can restrict the operator U to that subspace, and we can find a matrix which represents the operator on the subspace. And so once we have that, we can use that matrix U as a linear model for the nonlinear system, provided that the state of the system can be recovered from the set of observables that we have. So um, now what we're interested in now is actually a stochastic Koopman operator. So if instead of just a discrete time system x prime is equal to t of x, we now have the map, the transition map is actually a random map. So we have x prime is equal to t omega of x. And t omega is going to be an IID random variable on some probability space. And so we choose T omega to be IID for a couple reasons. We want um, the state of the system to be a time homogeneous Markov family. And we're also going to assume that we have a stationary ergodic measure on the system. Um, so basically, we need to be able to take time averages of the system, and we want it to sample the system well. And so for the stochastic Koopman operator, we can't just define an operator to compose it with the one step map T, since that map is random. So instead, we describe, we define the operator to be the expectance over the possible realizations of the dynamics for the future value of the function. So that's described here in the equation, KF is equal to the expectance of F of T omega. And you can also describe that in terms of conditional expectances. It's the expectance of x of f of x t plus one, given that x t is at a specific value. Now, similar to the deterministic Koopman operator, the stochastic Koopman operator is also a linear operator. And given a finite dimensional invariant subspace, we can also find a matrix which represents the stochastic Koopman operator and we can use that to have a linear model of our system. 
Um, so the issue is finding that invariant subspace and then finding the matrix K. Um, and to do that, we use dynamic mode decomposition algorithms. So if we have bold F, which is a vector value observables, so F1 up to FK are the observables that we're using, and we're expecting those observables to span a finite dimensional subspace. Um, and then we're just going to denote F of T to be um, F of XT, the X data point from the teeth data point from the system. So dynamic mode decompositions in its decomposition in its simplest form works by you form the matrix X, which takes the first N data samples, and you form the matrix Y, which contains the last N data samples, that's the N plus one data samples total. And you're just finding the matrix A which best maps each data sample into the next one. So AX approximately needs to equal Y. And it's pretty simple to find um, the matrix which fits that, which is just using the more penrose pseudo inverse of X. So we form the matrix A is equal to Y X pseudo inverse. Um, now that um, is going to be the approximation of K, A, in this algorithm. And so the accuracy of the approximation depends largely on the functions F1 up to FK spanning an invariant subspace of U or K, depending on if it's, depending on if it's deterministic or stochastic. Now this algorithm can be shown to converge to U or K if we have an invariant subspace as the data gets large, but it does run into issues with noise. So if you wanna look at it closely, um, if X is full rank, we can kind of simplify this. We can let G zero equal the average of X, X transpose. So one over X, one over N, X, X star. And then G one is one over N, Y, X star because if we decompose the pseudo inverse using the full rank assumption, we have A is equal to Y X star X X star inverse, which is equal to G1 G0 inverse. And if you look at the matrices G0 and G1, you can actually see that the entries of G0 and G1 are numerical approximations of the inner products of the functions in our invariant subspace. And so DMD depends primarily on the convergence of those inner product, of those time averages shown in the equation to the inner products. And so if those time averages don't converge accurately, we cannot expect our matrix given by DMD to be an accurate approximation to the Koopman operator, stochastic Koopman operator. Um, but so the issues with DMD come from noise oftentimes, and this is well documented. And there are a bunch of algorithms that can combat this, but they all have their own benefits and disadvantages. But so if we suppose that our observables contain some noise, so we're gonna let F tilde equal F of XT plus some random noise, and then it does not necessarily need to be IID. It can be some arbitrary noise. It can be related to other noises. And then G tilde is another variable which also has some noise added to it. We can look at how the time averages converge. And we can actually see that they do not converge to the inner products of the function. So the time average of the product of F tilde and G tilde um, converges to the inner product of F and G, which is what we want. And then it also has this error term. And this error term actually stems from the covariance of the noise in F and the noise in G. And so with these covariances, the matrices G0 and G1, which I defined in the last slide, will be inaccurate. And then once you add the inversion, it can lead into very large errors in the actual approximation of the operator. 
If, however, we have the noise in F and the noise in G independent, the time averages can converge as desired, and then we can use ODMD algorithms um, to generate an accurate representation. Um, so this brings us to our new noise-resistant DMD algorithm. So if you look at it, it's very much the same as DMD, except we have this extra matrix Z and an extra set of observables G. Um, so we formed X and Y matrices exactly as before using the time samples, but then we also form a Z matrix using the samples of G. And then instead of just taking X or Y X pseudo inverse, we actually take Y Z star X Z star pseudo inverse, um, which is a little bit more complicated, but you'll see why we do this. It's very similar actually. And so one thing that I want to note about this algorithm is that although it seems like we need to use an extra set of observables G, we can actually just generate G using time delays of F. And we actually don't need an extra set of observables for many cases. And that's the benefit of this algorithm. So for the first example where we can have noise is if we just have some measurement noise added to the observables F, um, we can see that DMG won't converge because these noises, they might be IID, but they might be correlated with themselves or other um, noises. Um, but since it's IID, the previous time step, we can have independence. So if we just let G be a time shift of F, so the previous value of F, we can actually let use that in this noise resistant DMD algorithm and we will get convergence. Um, so our first example is just gonna be a random rotation on a circle. Um, theta T plus one is gonna be theta T plus some random variable, which is the rotation. So this is a random dynamical system, map is random. But then we also have the observables have randomness too. So the observables are going to be sines and cosines, but there's going to be some noise added to it between minus one half and one half. And I'd like to point out that the noise is pretty large relative to the signal, but the algorithm will actually converge accurately to the true spectrum of the Koopman operator, even with these, uh, even with all the noise. And you can see that using those same observables with EDMD, um, we, can, we consistently see the biased eigenvalues. These are all biased inwards towards zero. Um, but the noise resistant algorithm hits it pretty much then. And so these eigenvalues are all kind of from enough data that we pretty much have seen convergence to the eigenvalues that the algorithm wants to give. Um, so you can certainly see that EDMD does not work here. And then a second example is from the idea of Henkel DMD and then time delayed observables. So we often like to use time delayed observables in DMD for a couple reasons. One, it allows us to enrich our space of observables without really having to measure more observables. But then also time delays allow us to try and and span the Krilov subspace of the stochastic Koopman operator. And since the Krilov subspace is supposed to be an invariant subspace, an approximation of one, and DMD requires an invariant subspace, you can see how that's a very useful idea um, for dynamic mode decompositions. But the issue with time delays is even if the observable doesn't have any noise, the time delays add randomness to the observable because the dynamics themselves are random. And since you're composing the map with the dynamics, then your time delays become random observables. But once again, noise resistant DMD can overcome this. And we do this by letting F be the normal time delays of our observable. And if we let G be the previous time delays, we actually will have the noise in F and G being independent and the noise resistant algorithm will converge. 
So an example for this system, we use the Struten-Land equations. And so these are a stochastic differential equation, but um, they also satisfy the properties we assume where the system is a time homogeneous Markov family, has an invariant measure and all that. Um, and we can see that once again, the noise resistant DMD accurately captures the eigenvalues. Obviously, they haven't converged completely, but you can see that we're um, unbiased in our approximation at the very least. Whereas EDMD, although it does seem to converge a bit quicker, it converges to the incorrect values where all the eigenvalues are along the imaginary axis when the true eigenvalues are actually in the left half plane. Um, and so I have some references, but. That is all. Any questions?